I'm Mark Payne. I'm a candidate for state representative in the 5th House District. The district uh, goes as far as west as Grand River and Myers. It goes as far as east as Elijah and Webb. And then it goes as far as south as Fort and Schaefer. Then as far as north as Dexter and Davis. Hey, uh, welcome, Mark. I appreciate you coming out in this uh, short notice. I know uh, this is a crucial time with two weeks underway. Uh, for the election. I just want to ask you a few questions uh, regarding, uh, you know, you're running for state rep. That's a very important position. Uh, you're going to be dealing with legislation and creating laws for the service of the people. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into it and ask a little bit about your platform. Um, I know you used to be a former educator, educator. Uh, so I know education is something that is a priority for you. So uh, what, what are you going to do in terms of the education, man? You know, Detroit, we had a lot of school foreclosures things of that sort and, and all those things that has been attacking our schools and the education, the quality of the education is extremely low right now. If I recall, we scored the lowest uh, in the entire country when it comes to uh, test assessments. So the question I have is, is that, you know, let's, uh, what, what, what do you plan to do in regards to that? What about education? So education is very, very important. We have to uh, make sure we have quality education for our students, for our children, so they can grow up and be the best that they can be. The thing about it is we have to listen to the teachers. As a former teacher, uh, we have to make sure we listen to the teachers and, and promote and advocate the things that the teachers want since the teachers are on the front line. So the simple, the, the, the solution is talking to the teachers and then putting those solutions into policy and then funding those solutions. So the solution is very simple and that's just the, about the end of it. I can go into a lot of different other policy issues, but the, when it all comes down to it, we all know the solutions to the problems. We just have to fund the problems and we have to have the political will to fund those problems. And so we got to make sure that our schools constantly uh, stay properly and adequately funded so we can create, so we can have you know, wraparound services that deals with the whole child, mental health, counseling, uh, things of that nature, so we can, you know, create a better future for ourselves. Okay, okay, that makes perfect sense. Uh, the other thing is, I want to talk about, man, is something that, you know, and I've been asking every candidate this, you know, you probably take a wild guess, it's something that has been uh, prevalent, real, real prevalent in communities, something that has actually uh, been affecting, you know, the real demographics, the real population of the city of Detroit, uh, auto insurance, you know, it's been a real big, uh, you know, it's been a real big plague on uh, the city of Detroit. So my question is to you, uh, what, what is your opinion, what, what are you going to do uh, to affect uh, the auto insurance? Do you have a plan or is this, uh, are you willing to create a plan, if not, if you don't already have one in regards to auto insurance? So. I'm willing, to, I'm willing to sit down with all of the stakeholders and all of the interest, interested parties and craft a solution so we can lower our auto insurance. And that's the bottom line. I'm not about to get into which, which stakeholder blaming this stakeholder. We need to all sit down and craft a solution to get our auto insurance rates lower. So we need to all come to the table. They need to leave the table feeling as though they lost them, and the consumers have to win. It's just that simple. It's a whole lot of reasons about why things the way they are. I have an opportunity to go to Lansing and sit down with all the stakeholders and craft a real solution to lower our auto insurance rates. And that's the bottom line. So based upon this being like bipartisan, uh, working with Republicans and Democrats, it's going to take. Absolutely, it's going to have to be a bipartisan effort. I mean. 110 state legislators you need 56 legislators to pass a bill it's not even that many democrats in the house of representatives as of right now things may change as the election goes by so it has to be a bipartisan approach plain and simple okay okay um any the other thing i wanted to ask you about in regards to we talked about insurance and then we also talked about uh education um what about uh you know, we're we dealing with right now, it appears to be gentrification, right? We see a lot of blight. Uh, we see a lot of development in the city of Detroit. Um, are you an advocate for uh, home affordability? 
Yes. I'm also an advocate of making sure that we can keep our folks inside of their houses. So as a state legislator, that's something that I can do, make it harder for folks to get put out their houses as it pertains to the for to the foreclosure crisis. I also want to be a strong advocate for blight abatement. I've been knocking doors in my district and, and I've seen a lot of blight, a lot of uh, destruction and things of that nature. Houses are not being taken care of. People don't know who own the houses. So I want to create some type of program uh, to, get, to get some extra funding from the state in order to address this major, major blight issue in the 5th District. Another one of your platforms that I've seen. How y'all doing? Hey, peace and love. It's another platform that I've seen, uh, Revenue Sharing. Can you share us a little bit of information about that for the people who may not know what you're referring to? So Revenue Sharing is, is money that's redistributed to the cities, villages, and townships. Okay. The money pays for essential services like fire, police, EMS, services, and services uh, for our city. And if we don't get our fair share of revenue sharing, then those crucial services can be cut, which will lead to not being good for our city. I'm planning on making sure that our revenue sharing is only increased and never cut. And if you don't have quality people there that know the legislative process and know that Detroit's revenue sharing, sharing can be potentially cut, then it's in danger of actually being cut. So I want to be protective of the money that we have coming from the state. Okay. That's what's up, man. So, you know, man, I, I know you uh, for, for quite some time. Uh, I know you as a person who's very committed to the cause. Uh, one of the things that people may not know about you that I know, and you've actually educated me and several of my, uh, you know, uh, former members and, and current members in the organization is about political, you know, political, political analysis, understanding the history and the current uh, political status quo in the, in the city of Detroit and in the state. Um, you've been doing political classes for how long now? I've been doing political education for close to two years now. Two years, and I think that's tremendous because when we're talking about you know voters' education, uh, a lot of times half the battle is just honestly knowing what is what, you know, understanding the history and knowing and moving forward so you can make be, make informed choices. So if you can just give a quick background of uh, some of the work and your experience and why you are qualified uh, to be a state rep and why did you run to be state rep? Okay. Well, for the past three and a half years, I've been in uh, Lansing working as the chief of staff for the current state representative of the 5th District, Representative Durhaw. And I've been able to learn the legislative process. I've been able to build relationships. Uh, I've been able to go to all kinds of forums and all types of programs, Michigan State Legislative Leadership Program. I'm also a graduate, uh, graduate of the Great Lakes Political Academy. So I've had extensive training on policy and legislative issues so I can hit the ground running as soon as the people put me there. Uh, in addition, the political education just started because people would ask a whole lot of questions. And I realized that a lot of people don't know about basic things that I hear every day in Lansing. So I decided to take everything I learned and I put it into a curriculum. curriculum. And it started out as a 13-week curriculum. And I just continued to keep going and going and going because the people uh, enjoyed it. And it's something that I'm going to continue to do as a state representative in the 5th District. So what were you primarily doing before you got yourself involved uh, with Fred Doerhaw? Because I know you mentioned you said you worked out of Fred Doerhaw, Chief of Staff. So before then, what were you doing uh, prior? Well, I'm um, a lifelong Detroiter, graduated from Cass Tech, went to, went to Eastern Michigan, um, graduated from Eastern Michigan, and I became a school teacher. I did that for five years. I taught uh, preschool all the way to eighth grade. And I also was a substitute for Detroit Public Schools for a whole year and a half. Okay. Uh, last question. What sets you apart from all the other candidates that's running right now? You have to say, what, what, why should someone go exclusively uh, for Mark Payne for District 5? Well, I'm knowledgeable about legislative um, policies, legislative issues, and the legislative process. I have a heart of service. I've been serving my community, whether it be teaching or teaching political education. I have the dedication. I have the heart and love for people. All right, man. Well, listen, man. I appreciate you coming out, man. All right, man. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Mark Payne, make sure y'all vote for him on August 7th. Again, that's August 7th. Post open at 7 o'clock and then shut down at 8 p.m. Y'all make sure y'all come out. Mark Payne for District 5. District 5. All right.
Peace and love. TPA.